Welcome to American Medicine Today. We're here in Tampa, Florida at the University of South Florida, also known as USF, here with Red Juan El -Kasimi. He's going to show us a program called the VR for VR, which stands for Virtual Reality for Vocational Rehabilitation, right? That's correct. Right. That's correct. Tell us about it. So this is a program that we have a contract with the Department of Education. Uh, to assist and train people with physical and cognitive disabilities. There are different programs that introduce distractions so participants can focus on specific fears and train to overcome them. And what we came up with uh, is a virtual environment that can change a lot of things and put distractors and other things where you can really assist them and see what triggers their fears uh, and makes them uh, possibly uh, behave some, you know, produce some kind of uh, irrelevant behavior. What is taking so long? Can't you move a little faster? Uh, and then see if you can train them to overcome these fears. What are some of these distractors? I saw one is a barking dog, one is a screaming child, which I find very irritating at times. So what are some of these distractors? So some of these distractors, for example, depending on the module, but some of them, uh, you have thunderstorm uh, uh, going outside the store. Uh, you have rain. Some of them have, for example, leaking roof from the, the rain. How does that reaction? And all sorts of distractors depending on the module that we're working and on. And who comes up with these distractor ideas? With meetings with job coaches and counselors, we came up with the most uh, relevant distractors that we can include in our program. Now, I know when I've seen the video that you see writing on different objects, but that's not really on the objects themselves. How are they seeing what's written? So what we have here, we have virtual environment that's kind of, uh, we include a lot of tangible objects where you can see a box here that's not labeled. There is no label on these objects, right? But then we have trackers on these objects and we have tracking cameras on the frame. And they see this object or this box as a labeled box. Maybe it's a cornflakes box. And as soon as they pick it up, they can see in the virtual environment that it's really moving with them. The VR for VR creates a virtual environment with tangible objects. Participants can feel real objects that are represented in the virtual world. And speaking of the trackers, why don't you tell us a little bit about this and how that works. We have reflectors and we have uh, cameras here that would take these reflections and uh, convert them into position and orientation in space. The trackers are not only placed on the head, hands, and feet, but any object introduced, like brooms and boxes. I've seen them designing video games where they use, it looks like the same technology, where they put dots on, on a right. person who they want right. to use them as, a, as an avatar in the game. It's Absolutely. sort of the same thing? The same thing. So here, you know, if I, if I put this in my, on my hand here, I can try, track my hand motion flawlessly. Mm -hmm. uh, I put them here on these boxes, I can track the boxes. I put them on my feet, I can track my feet. So you'll have a match between what you see in the virtual environment and what's actually happening in, in reality. The virtual environment is a complete 360 degrees and accompanied by a surround speaker system in order to truly encompass the subject into the experience. So that the person would not be confused that the voice is coming from the back while I see the person in front of me. We spoke with third year PhD student Lal, who was originally a game designer before coming over and working on the computer science doctor program. It's kind of like designing a video game actually. Um, it's called serious gaming games to train individuals. I have always been interested in game design, but then um, here we have a tangible value on the things we are doing. People come and use, we see the difference it makes for them. They say that I've learned so much stuff um, while training here. They learn um, counting money or interacting with tangible boxes like warehouse skill tasks. I think the tangible value we are the benefit people are getting is the um, best thing. VR for VR currently has six modules for cognitive disabilities. Including shelving, placing, stacking, and organizing boxes on shelves and conveyors, similar to working in a distribution center fulfilling orders. We'll start with shelving, alignment, and distractors. All right. To start, I'm going to hit the begin. I want you to rotate the boxes on the shelves next to you such that all of the labeled sides are facing outwards. After that, Touch the ready button on the table. So for distractors, you can make an object fall in the background. Yeah, or lightning. You can have lightning strike. Yeah, right. In the background. And these are meant, obviously they're called distractors for a reason. They're meant to try to throw off a person from their task. Cleaning, simulating vacuum, mopping, or even picking up trash from the floor. Environmental awareness simulates collecting carts in a parking lot while avoiding cars and other distractions. Loading the back of a truck. I want you to load the back of that truck with labeled boxes. 
This is where different sizes and shapes with labels come into play. Okay. Oh, oh, and there that's was a no fragile good. box. Yeah, so they must be careful about um, fragile boxes. Money management. This simulates working a grocery checkout where you have to give proper change back. There's that kid I was talking about. And social skills. Teaching interactions within the workplace environment. So that could be dealing with your coworkers, a rude customer, or even taking orders from your boss. Why do you think these workers don't organize these damn boxes on the shelves? Because they don't have a clue and that's why you brought me in. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I enjoyed the social skills portion where I got to interact with someone who was my boss. They asked me to go and direct people to certain sections of a grocery store. You did feel a little bit of anxiety, especially when Ethan was behind the keyboard. Yeah, that was a lot of fun messing with Kimberly. Even when she gave the right answer, I said she gave the wrong answer. Wrong. What do you mean wrong? <laughs> I did the environmental awareness where you have to walk around a parking lot and collect carts, and it was actually pretty difficult. You actually had to learn and adapt, and you had to avoid different distractors like cars coming by and mud puddles. It was a really good example of how virtual training is much safer than real world training, because I even ran into a car, but since it was a virtual world, I was safe. Looking forward, there would be a seventh module in the works, and that would be directed towards individuals with physical disabilities. And that module basically uh, trains them on using a robotic assistant. So basically the assistant would have two arms and it's mobile. So this way a person with physical disability can work probably from home. And then the, the robot would be representing that person in the work environment, and they can do that work. Uh, by mimicking the motion of the, of the user. The virtual training may be ready in a matter of weeks, but the robot itself still has a little way to go. So these are the goggles. You can go ahead and put them if you'd like. Oh, I, okay. Huh. So there's sensors on top of the goggles as well, which track the movement of her head, correct? So, so, right, so this tracks the movement of your head. So if you go up, down, right, left, your environment will move with you as, as you move. So it looks like real. Uh, and what we try to do, we try to make this as immersive as possible. The more immersed the subject is, the easier it will be to transition their newly acquired skills into real world environments. You track the head movement, we saw the, the wristbands, are there things for the legs or feet? For the legs and feet, right. And then for the boxes and any other objects, we'll have a broom, we have a vacuum, all of these are tracked. Uh, so the person can see the motion of these things while they're doing the, the task. And I understand obviously this is still in sort of the testing or the research and development phase, but you have been working with actual people and clients. What sort of success rate have you seen? A lot of things that we have seen include distractors. So we have found out that a lot of distractors don't really distract uh, the users as much as the irritation that comes out of, you know, different things uh, in, in, in the environment. Uh, for example, a person might be, you know, sitting on a cashier desk and they're doing some accounting and then somebody comes like an angry customer or something, they don't react much to, uh, to change what they're doing. That was kind of interesting, you know, because we're, we're touching a new territory. Nobody has done such a work before. So a lot of the unknowns that we don't know about are, you know, re revealed at this point, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And why do you think this would be better, the virtual reality? sort of rehab and training versus real world training where someone takes someone out into uh, you know, the actual world with distractions and cars and barking dogs and things like that. First of all, safety. You know, safety is number one. In the virtual environment, there is no fear of consequences. You know? So I know I'm safe. If there are cars, you know, whatever happens here, you know, I know that there will be no consequences. That would help in training them to overcome these fears and these problems. Now, slowly as you go, once you are trained, you go to a per place where you have consequences, and then you already know and aware of what you should do in these circumstances. But if you take them to the actual environment and they know there, there will be consequences, they may never overcome that fear. And you said at the very end they're certified? Every module they pass, we give them a certificate to say that they have successfully passed this particular uh, module and this basically assist and train them to do this one, two, three, four, five. And, and that's then, so basically if they go for a job interview they, per se, they sure. can say, hey, I can do this. Right. You know, and it's up to the employer if, you know, right. to assist and if this is work, you know, working with them or not. Yeah, they can say, you know, I may have a traumatic brain injury, but right. I've taken these courses, I'm certified, I can handle these tasks. Right. right. The types of people that would come in for this service, they have autism? Autism. Traumatic brain injury? TBI, right. Spinal cord injury. Spinal cord injury. Okay, and that's... That's, that's what we're doing limit. right now for okay. this contract, but the sky is the limit. You know, you can bring any subject here and we can do assessment, but, but for the funding that we have for this project at this point, 
is for assessing these three uh, different categories. And so what's on the horizon? What's next? Where are you going with this technology? So the state of Florida here is trying to, you know, take this now to the next level, uh, which, you know, we're working with them to do that. Basically, it becomes part of their program. The counselors go through to assist person with therapy and seeking jobs and make systematic assessment. Because, you know, any incident that happens, you know, it makes a, an employer think twice before hiring somebody. Right. So before going through that route, make sure that they can really do the job before you, you start. Well, you're doing some great work here, helping the locals become re-employed within the market. And thank you for taking the time to show us around VR for VR here at USF. Thank you. My pleasure. And I really appreciate you coming here and showing this off to uh, the world. And, you know, that's our goal. You know, we want to make sure that people who are underrepresented and maybe forgotten in the society can also go and seek jobs and seek better lives.